Section 10 of The Vision of Sir Launfall and Other Poems by James Russell Lowell. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Phil Shemp. To W. L. Garrison. Some time afterward, it was reported to me by the city officers that they had ferreted out the paper and its editor, that his office was an obscure hole, his only visible auxiliary a negro boy, and his supporters a very few insignificant persons of all colors. Letter of H. G. Otis. In a small chamber, friendless and unseen, toiled o'er his types one poor unlearned young man. The place was dark, unfurnitured, and mean, yet there the freedom of a race began. Help came but slowly, surely no man yet put lever to the heavy world with less. What need of help? He knew how types were set, he had a dauntless spirit and a press. Such earnest natures are the fiery path, the compact nucleus round which systems grow. Mass after mass becomes inspired therewith, and whirls impregnate with the central glow. O truth, O freedom, how are ye stillborn in the rude stable, in the manger nursed? What humble hands unbar those gates of morn, through which the splendors of the new day burst? What? Shall one monk, scarce known beyond his cell, front Rome's far-reaching bolts, and scorn her frown? Brave Luther answered yes, that thunder's swell rocked Europe and discharmed the triple crown. Whatever can be known of earth we know, sneered Europe's wise men, in their snail shells curled no said one man in genoa and that no out of the dark created this new world who is it will not dare himself to trust who is it hath not strength to stand alone who is it thwarts and bilks the inward must he and his works like sand from earth are blown men of a thousand shifts and wiles look here see one straightforward conscience put in pawn to win a world see the obedient sphere by bravery simple gravitation drawn shall we not heed the lesson taught of old and by the presence lips repeated still in our own single manhood to be bold fortressed in conscience and impregnable will we stride the river daily at its spring nor in our childish thoughtlessness foresee what myriad vassal streams shall tribute bring how like an equal it shall greet the sea o oh, small beginnings ye are great and strong based on a faithful heart and a weariless brain ye build the future fair ye conquer wrong ye earn the crown and wear it not in vain end of section ten section eleven of the vision of sir launfall and other poems by james russell lowell this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Phil Schempf. Wendell Phillips He stood upon the world's broad threshold, Wide the din of battle and of slaughter rose. He saw God stand upon the weaker side, That sank in seeming loss before its foes. Many there were who made great haste, And sold unto the cunning enemy their swords. He scorned their gifts of fame and power and gold, and underneath their soft and flowery words heard the cold serpent hiss therefore he went and humbly joined him to the weaker part fanatic named and fool yet well content so he could be the nearer to god's heart and feel its solemn pulses sending blood through all the widespread veins of endless good end of section eleven Section 12 of The Vision of Sir Launfall and Other Poems by James Russell Lowell. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Phil Schempf. Mr. Hosea Biglow to the editor of the Atlantic Monthly. When the Mexican War was under discussion, Mr. Lowell began the publication in a Boston newspaper of satirical poems written in the Yankee dialect and purporting to come, for the most part, from one Hosea Biglow. The poems were the sharpest political darts that were fired at the time, 
and when the verses were collected and set forth with a paraphernalia of introductions and notes professedly prepared by an old-fashioned scholarly parson rev homer wilbur the book gave mr lowell a distinct place as a wit and satirist and was read with delight in england and america after the circumstance which called it out had become a matter of history and no longer of politics when the war for the union broke out mr lowell took up the same strain and contributed to the atlantic monthly a second series of biglow papers and just before the close of the war published the poem that follows dear sir your letter come to hand requested me to please be funny but i ain't made upon a plan that knows what's comin gall or honey there's times the world does look so queer odd fancies come afore i call em and then again for half a year no preacher thought a calls more solemn you're in want o something light and cute rattlin and shrewd and kino jinglish in wish pervidnited suit i'd take and citify my english i can write long tailed ef i please but when i'm jokin no i thank ye then for i know it my idees run helter skelter in de yankee since i begun to scribble rhyme i tell ye what i hain't been foolin the parson's books life death and time hev took some trouble with my schoolin nor the air don't get put out with me that lovers though she was a woman why there ain't a bird upon the tree but half forgives my bein human and yet i loved the in high schooled way old farmer's head when i was younger their talk was meatier and ud say why a book froth seems to wet your hunger for puttin in a downright lick twixt humburg's eyes there's few can match it and then it helves my thoughts as slick as stret grained hickory do sa hatchet but when i can't i can't that's all for nature won't put up with gullin ideas you have to shove and haul like a druv pig ain't worth a mullin live thoughts ain't sent for through all rifts o sense they pour and rush ye onwards like rivers when south lion drifts feel that old air so wheelin sunwards time was the rhymes come crowdin thick as office seekers are ter lection and into airy place it stick without no bother nor objection but since the war my thoughts hang back as though i wanted to enlist em and substitutes they don't never lack but then they slope before you missed em nothin don't seem like what it was i can't see what there is to hinder and yet my brains just go buzz buzz like bumblebees agin a winder for these times come and all air throw there was one quiet place my head in where i could hide and think but now it's all one teeter hoppin dreadin where's peace i start some clear-blown night when gaunt stone walls grow numb and nummer and creak and cross the snow crust white walk the cold starlight into summer up grows the moon and swell by swell through the pale pastures silvers dimmer than the last smile that strives to tell o oh, love gone heavenward in its shimmer i have been gladder o oh, such things than cocks of spring or bees of clover they fill my heart with livin springs but now they seem to freeze em over sights innocent as babes on knee peaceful as eyes o oh, pastured cattle just cause they be so seems to me to rile me more with thoughts of battle indoors and out by spells i try ma'am nature keeps her spin wheel goin but leaves my nature stiff and dry as feels a clover arter mowin and her just keepin on the same calmer in a clock and never carin and find a nary thing to blame it was as ef she took to swearin snowflakes come whisperin on the pane the charm makes blazin logs so pleasant but i can't hark to what they're sayin with grant or sherman allers present the chimbleys shudder in the gale that lulls then sudden takes to flappin like a shot hawk but all is stale to me is so much spirit rappin under the yaller pines i house when sunshine makes em all sweet scented and here among their furry boughs the baskin west wind purr contented 
while way o'erhead as sweet and low as distant bells that ring for meetin the wedged wild geese their bugles blow further and further south retreatin or up the slippery knob i strain and see a hundred hills like islands lift their blue woods in broken chain out o the sea o snowy silence the farm smokes sweetest sight on earth slow through the winter air shrinkin seem kind of sad and round the hearth o oh, empty places set me thinkin beaver roars hoarse with meltin snows and rattles diamonds from his granite time was he snatched away my prose and into psalms our satires ran it but he nor all the rest that once started my blood to country dances can't set me goin more'n a dunce that hain't no use for dreams and fancies rat tat tattle through the street i hear the drummers makin riot and i set thinkin o oh, the feet that follered once and now are quiet white feet is snowdrops innercent that never knowed the paths of satan whose comin step their ears that won't no not lifelong leave off a waitin why ain't i held em on my knee didn't i love to see em growin three likely lads as well could be handsome and brave and not too knowin i set and looked into the blaze whose nature just like theirn keeps climbin as long as it lives in shinin ways and half despised myself for rhymin what's words to them whose faith and truth on war's red touchstone rang true metal who ventured life and love and youth for the great prize o death and battle to him who deadly hurt again flashed on afore the charger's thunder tippin wid fire the bolt of men that rive the rebel line asunder tain't right to have the young go fust all throbbin full of gifts and graces leavin life's paupers dry as dust to try and make believe fill their places nothin but tells us what we miss there's gaps our lives can't never fay in and that world seems so fur from this left for us loafers to grow gray in my eyes cloud up for rain my mouth will take to twitchin round the corners i pity mothers too down south for all they sought among the scorners i'd sooner take my chance to stand at judgment where your meanest slave is that at god's bar hole up a hand as drippin red as yarn jeff davis come peace not like a mourner bowed for honor lost and dear ones wasted but proud to meet a people proud with eyes that tell o triumph tasted come with a hand grippin on the hilt and step that proves ye victory's daughter longin for you our spirits wilt like shipwrecked men on rafts for water come while our country feels the lift of a gret instinct shoutin forwards and knows that freedom ain't a gift that tarries long in hands of cowards come such as mothers prayed for when they kissed their cross with lips that quivered and bring fair wages for brave men a nation saved a race delivered End of section twelve section thirteen of the vision of sir launfall and other poems by james russell lowell this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by phil shemp via franca the battles of magenta and solferino in the early summer of eighteen fifty nine had given promise of a complete emancipation of italy from the austrian supremacy when napoleon three who was acting in alliance with victor emmanuel king of sardinia held a meeting with the emperor franz joseph of austria at via franca and agreed to terms which were very far from including the unification of italy there was a general distrust of napoleon and the war continued with the final result of a united italy in the poem which follows mr lowell gives expression to his want of faith in the french emperor wait a little do we not wait louis napoleon is not fate francis joseph is not time there's one hath swifter feet than crime cannon parliaments settle not venice is austria's whose is thought meany is good but spite of change gutenberg's gun has the longest range spin spin cloth spin lahasis twist and atropos sever 
in the shadow year out year in the silent headsman waits forever wait we say our years are long men are weak but man is strong since the stars first curve their rings we have looked on many things great wars come and great wars go wolf tracks light on polar snow we shall see him come and gone this second-hand napoleon spin spin clotha spin lachesis twist and atropus sever in the shadow year out year in the silent headsman waits forever we saw the elder corsican and clotha muttered as she span while crowned lackeys bore the train of the pinchbeck charlemagne sister stint not length of thread sister stay the scissors dread on st helen's granite bleak hark the vulture wets his beak spin spin clotha spin lachesis twist and atropus sever in the shadow year out year in the silent headsman waits forever the bonapartes we know their bees that wade in honey red to the knees their patient reaper its sheaves sleep sound in dreamless garners underground we know false glory's spendthrift race pawning nations for feathers and lace it may be short it may be long tis reckoning day sneers unpaid wrong spin spin clotha spin lachesis twist and atropos sever in the shadow year out year in the silent headsman waits forever the cock that wears the eagle's skin can promise what he ne'er could win slavery reaped for fine words sown system for all and rights for none despots atop a wild clan below such is the gaul from long ago wash the black from the ethiop's face wash the past out of man or race spin spin clotha spin lachesis twist and atropos sever in the shadow year out year in the silent headsman waits forever neath gregory's throne a spider swings and snares the people for the kings luther is dead old quarrels pass the stake's black scars are healed with grass so dreamers prate did man ere live saw priest or woman yet forgive but luther's broom is left and eyes peer o'er their creeds to where it lies spin spin clotha spin lachesis twist and atropos sever in the shadow year out year in the silent headsman waits forever smooth sails the ship of either realm kaiser and jesuit at the helm we look down the depths and mark silent workers in the dark building slow the sharp tusked reefs old instincts hardening to new beliefs patience a little learn to wait hours are long on the clock of fate spin spin clotha spin lachesis twist and atropos sever darkness is strong and so is sin but only god endures for ever end of section thirteen section fourteen of the vision of sir launfall and other poems by james russell lowell this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by phil Schempf. the nightingale in the study come forth my catbird calls to me and hear me sing a cavatina that in this old familiar tree shall hang a garden of alcina these buttercups shall brim with wine beyond all lesbian juice or massic may not new england be divine my ode to ripening summer classic or if to me you will not hark by beaver brook a thrush is ringing till all the alder coverts dark seem sunshine dappled with his singing come out beneath the unmastered sky with its emancipating spaces and learn to sing as well as i without premeditated graces what boot your many volumed gains those withered leaves forever turning to win at best for all your pains a nature mummy wrapped in learning the leaves wherein true wisdom lies on living trees the sun are drinking those white clouds drowsing through the skies grew not so beautiful by thinking 
come out with me the oriole cries escape the demon that pursues you and hark the cuckoo weatherwise still hiding farther onward woos you alas dear friend that all my days has poured from thy syringa thicket the quaintly discontinuous lays to which i hold a season ticket a season ticket cheaply bought with a dessert of pilfered berries and who so oft my soul has caught with morn and evening voluntaries deem me not faithless if all day among my dusty books i linger no pipe like thee for june to play with fancy led half conscious finger a bird is singing in my brain and bubbling o'er with mingled fancies gay tragic rapt right heart of spain fed with the sap of old romances i ask no ampler skies than those his magic music rears above me no falser friends no truer foes and does not dona clara love me cloaked shapes a twanging of guitars a rush of feet and rapiers clashing then silence deep with breathless stars and overhead a white hand flashing o music of all moods and climes vengeful forgiving sensuous saintly where still between the christian chimes the moorish symbol tinkles faintly o life borne lightly in the hand for friend or foe with grace castilian o valley safe in fancy's land not trampled to mud yet by the million bird of to-day thy songs are stale to his my singer of all weathers my calderon my nightingale my arab soul in spanish feathers ah friend these singers dead so long and still god knows in purgatory give its best sweetness to all song to nature's self her better glory end of section fourteen section fifteen of the vision of sir launfall and other poems by james russell lowell this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by phil champ aladdin when i was a beggarly boy and lived in a cellar damp i had not a friend nor a toy but i had aladdin's lamp when i could not sleep for cold i had fire enough in my brain and builded with roofs of gold my beautiful castles in spain since then i have toiled day and night i have money and power good store but i'd give all my lamps of silver bright for the one that is mine no more take fortune whatever you choose you gave and may snatch again i have nothing twould pain me to lose for i own no more castles in spain end of section fifteen section sixteen of the vision of sir launfall and other poems by james russell lowell this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by phil schempf beaver brook hushed with broad sunlight lies the hill and minuting the long day's loss the cedar's shadow slow and still creeps o'er its dial of gray moss warm noon brims the full valley's cup the aspen's leaves are scarce astir only the little mill sends up its busy never-ceasing burr climbing the loose-piled wall that hems the road along the mill-pond's brink from neath the arching barberry stems my footstep scares the shy chawink beneath a bony buttonwood the mill's red door lets forth the din the whitened miller dust imbued flits past the square of dark within no mountain torrent strength is here sweet beaver child of forest still heaps its small pitcher to the ear and gently waits the miller's will swift slips undine along the race unheard and then with flashing bound floods the dull wheel with light and grace and laughing hunts the loath drudge round the miller dreams not at what cost the quivering millstones hum and whirl nor how for every turn are tossed armfuls of diamond and of pearl but summer cleared my happier eyes with drops of some celestial juice to see how beauty underlies for evermore each form of use and more methought i saw that flood which now so dull and darkling steals thick here and there with human blood to turn the world's laborious wheels 
no more than doth the miller there shut in our several cells do we know with what waste of beauty rare moves every day's machinery surely the wiser time shall come when this fine overplus of might no longer sullen slow and dumb shall leap to music and to light in that new childhood of the earth life of itself shall dance and play fresh blood in time's shrunk veins make mirth and labor meet delight half way end of section sixteen section seventeen of the vision of sir launfall and other poems by james russell lowell this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by phil Schempf. the shepherd of king admetus there came a youth upon the earth some thousand years ago whose slender hands were nothing worth whether to plough or reap or sow upon an empty tortoise shell he stretched some cords and drew music that made men's bosoms swell fearless or brim their eyes with dew then king admetus one who had pure taste by right divine decreed his singing not too bad to hear between cups of wine and so well pleased with being soothed into a sweet half-sleep three times his kingly beard he smoothed and made him viceroy o'er his sheep his words were simple words enough and yet he used them so that what in other mouths was rough in his seemed musical and low men called him but a shiftless youth in whom no good they saw and yet unwittingly in truth they made his careless words their law they knew not how he learned it all for idly hour by hour he sat and watched the dead leaves fall or mused upon a common flower it seemed the loveliness of things did teach him all their use for in mere weeds and stones and springs he found a healing power profuse men granted that his speech was wise but when a glance they caught of his slim grace and woman's eyes they laughed and called him good for naught yet after he was dead and gone and e'en his memory dim earth seemed more sweet to live upon more full of love because of him and day by day more holy grew each spot where he had trod till after poets only knew their first-born brother as a god end of section seventeen section eighteen of the vision of sir launfall and other poems by james russell lowell this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by phil Schempf. the present crisis in the year eighteen forty four which is the date of the following poem the question of annexation of texas was pending and it was made an issue of the presidential campaign then taking place the anti-slavery party feared and opposed annexation on account of the added strength which it would give to slavery and the south desired it for the same reason when a deed is done for freedom through the broad earth's aching breast runs a thrill of joy prophetic trembling on from east to west and the slave where'er he cowers feels the soul within him climb to the awful verge of manhood as the energy sublime of a century bursts full blossomed on the thorny stem of time through the walls of hut and palace shoots the instantaneous throw when the travail of the ages rings earth's systems to and fro at the birth of each new era with a recognizing start nation wildly looks at nation standing with mute lips apart and glad truth's yet mightier man-child leaps beneath the future's heart so the evil's triumph sendeth with a terror and a chill under continent to continent the sense of coming ill and the slave where'er he cowers feels his sympathies with god in hot tear-drops ebbing earthward to be drunk up by the sod till a corpse crawls round unburied delving in the nobler clod for mankind are one in spirit and an instinct bears along round the earth's electric circle the swift flash of right or wrong whether conscious or unconscious yet humanity's vast frame through its ocean-sundered fibres feels the gush of joy or shame 
in the gain or loss of one race all the rest have equal claim once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide in the strife of truth with falsehood for the good or evil side some great cause god's new messiah offering each the bloomer blight parts the goats upon the left hand and the sheep upon the right and the choice goes by for ever twixt that darkness and that light hast thou chosen o my people on whose party thou shalt stand ere the doom from its worn sandals shakes the dust against our land though the cause of evil prosper yet tis truth alone is strong and albeit she wander outcast now i see around her throng troops of beautiful tall angels to enshield her from all wrong backward look across the ages and the beacon moments see that like peaks of some sunk continent jut through oblivion's sea not an ear in court or market for the low foreboding cry of those crises god's stern winnowers from whose feet earth's chaff must fly never shows the choice momentous till the judgment hath passed by careless seems the great avenger history's pages but record one death grapple in the darkness twixt old systems and the word truth forever on the scaffold wrong forever on the throne yet that scaffold sways the future and behind the dim unknown standeth god within the shadow keeping watch above his own we see dimly in the present what is small and what is great slow of faith how weak an arm may turn the iron helm of fate but the soul is still oracular amid the market's din list the ominous stern whisper from the delphic cave within they enslave their children's children who make compromise with sin slavery the earth-born cyclops fellest of the giant brood sons of brutish force and darkness who have drenched the earth with blood famished in this self-made desert blinded by our purer day gropes in yet unblasted regions for his miserable prey shall we guide his gory fingers where our helpless children play then to side with truth is noble when we share her wretched crust ere her cause bring fame and profit and tis prosperous to be just then it is the brave man chooses while the coward stands aside doubting in his abject spirit till his lord is crucified and the multitude make virtue of the faith they had denied count me o'er earth's chosen heroes they were souls that stood alone while the men they agonized for hurled the contumelious stone stood serene and down the future saw the golden beam incline to the side of perfect justice mastered by their faith divine by one man's plain truth to manhood and to god's supreme design by the light of burning heretics christ's bleeding feet i track toiling up the new calvaries ever with the cross that turns not back and these mounts of anguish number how each generation learned one new word of that grand credo which in prophet hearts hath burned since the first man stood god conquered with his face to heaven upturned for humanity sweeps onward where to-day the martyr stands on the morrow crouches judas with the silver in his hands far in front the cross stands ready and the crackling faggots burn while the hooting mob of yesterday in silent awe return to glean up the scattered ashes into history's golden urn tis as easy to be heroes as to sit the idle slaves of a legendary virtue carved upon our fathers graves worshippers of light ancestral make the present light a crime was the mayflower launched by cowards steered by men behind their time turn those tracks towards past or future that make plymouth rock sublime they were men of present valor stalwart old iconoclasts unconvinced by axe or gibbet that all virtue was the past's but we make their truth our falsehood thinking that hath made us free hoarding it in mouldy parchments while our tender spirits flee the rude grasp of that great impulse which drove them across the sea 
they have rights who dare maintain them we are traitors to our sires smothering in their holy ashes freedom's new-lit altar fires shall we make their creed our jailer shall we in our haste to slay from the tombs of the old prophets steal the funeral lamps away to light up the martyrs faggots round the prophets of to-day new occasions teach new duties time makes ancient good uncouth they must upward still and onward who would keep abreast of truth lo before us gleam her campfires we ourselves must pilgrims be launch our mayflower and steer boldly through the desperate winter sea nor attempt the future's portal with the past blood rusted key end of section eighteen section nineteen of the vision of sir launfall and other poems by james russell lowell this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Phil Shemp. Al fresco. The dandelions and buttercups gild all the lawn. The drowsy bee stumbles among the clover tops, and summer sweetens all but me. Away, unfruitful lore of books, for whose vain idiom we reject the soul's more native dialect aliens among the birds and brooks dull to interpret or conceive what gospels lost the woods retrieve away ye critics city-bred whose springes set of thus and so and in the first man's footsteps tread like those who toil through drifted snow away my poets whose sweet spell can make a garden of a cell i need ye not for i to-day will make one long sweet verse of play snap cord of manhood's tenser strain to-day i will be a boy again the mind's pursuing element like a bow slackened and unbent in some dark corner shall be learnt the robin sings as of old from the limb the catbird croons in the lilac bush through the dim arbor himself more dim silently hops the hermit thrush the withered leaves keep dumb for him the irreverent buccaneering bee hath stormed and rifled the nunnery of the lily and scattered the sacred floor with haste dropped gold from shrine to door there as of yore the rich milk-tinged buttercup its tiny polished urn holds up filled with ripe summer to the edge the sun and its own wine to pledge and our tall elm this hundredth year doge of our leafy venice here who with an annual ring doth wed the blue adriatic overhead shadows with his palatial mass the deep canals of flowing grass o oh, unestranged birds and bees o oh, face of nature always true o oh, never unsympathizing trees o oh, never rejecting roof of blue whose rash disharrison never falls on us unthinking prodigals yet who convict us all our ill so grand and unappeasable methinks my heart from each of these plucks part of childhood back again long there imprisoned as the breeze doth every hidden odour seize of wood and water hill and plain once more i am admitted peer in the upper house of nature here and feel through all my pulses run the royal blood of breeze and sun upon these elm-arched solitudes no hum of neighbor toil intrudes the only hammer that i hear is wielded by the woodpecker the single noisy calling his in all our leaf-hid sibiris the good old time close hidden here persists a loyal cavalier while round heads prim with point of fox probe wainscot chink and empty box here no hoarse-voiced iconoclast insults thy statues royal past myself too prone the axe to wield i touch the silver side of the shield with lance reversed and challenge peace a willing convert of the trees how chanced it that so long i tossed a cable's length from this rich coast with foolish anchors hugging close the beckoning weeds and lazy ooze nor had the wit to wreck before on this enchanted island shore whither the current of the sea with wiser drift persuaded me oh might we but of such rare days build up the spirit's dwelling-place a temple of so parian stone would brook a marble god alone the statue of a perfect life 
far shrined from earth's bestaining strife alas though such felicity in our vexed world here may not be yet as sometimes the peasant's hut shows stones which old religion cut with text inspired or mystic sign of the eternal and divine torn from the consecration deep of some fallen nunnery's mossy sleep so from the ruins of this day crumbling in golden dust away the soul one gracious block may draw carved with some fragment of the law which set in life's prosaic wall old benedictions may recall and lure some nun-like thoughts to take their dwelling here for memory's sake end of section nineteen Section twenty of the Vision of Sir Launfall and Other Poems by James Russell Lowell. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Phil Schempf. The Footpath. It mounts athwart the windy hill, through sallow slopes of upland bare, and fancy climbs with footfall still its narrowing curves that end in air by day a warmer-hearted blue stoops softly to that topmost swell its thread-like windings seem a clue to gracious climes where all is well by night far yonder i surmise an ampler world than clips my ken where the great stars of happier skies commingle nobler fates of men i look and long then haste me home still master of my secret rare once tried the path would end in rome but now it leads me everywhere forever to the new it guides from former good old overmuch what nature for her poets hides tis wiser to divine than clutch the bird i list hath never come within the scope of mortal ear my prying step would make him dumb and the fair tree his shelter sear behind the hill behind the sky behind my inmost thought he sings no feet avail to hear it nigh the song itself must lend the wings sing on sweet bird close hid and raise those angel stairways in my brain that climb from these low vaulted days to spacious sunshines far from pain sing when thou wilt enchantment fleet i leave thy covert haunt untrod and envy science not her feet to make a twice-told tale of god they said the fairies tripped no more and long ago that pan was dead twas but that fools preferred to bore earth's rind inch deep for truth instead pan leaps and pipes all summer long the fairies dance each full mooned night would we but doff our lenses strong and trust our wiser eyes delight city of elfland just without our seeing marvel ever new glimpsed in fair weather a sweet doubt sketched in mirage like on the blue i build thee in yon sunset cloud whose edge allures to climb the height i hear thy drowned bells inly loud from still pools dusk with dreams of night thy gates are shut to hardiest will thy countersign of long lost speech those fountained courts those chambers still fronting times far east who shall reach i know not and will never pry but trust our human heart for all wonders that from the seeker fly into an open sense may fall hide in thine own soul and surprise the password of the unwary elves seek it thou canst not bribe their spies unsought they whisper it themselves End of section 20. End of the Vision of Sir Launfall and Other Poems by James Russell Lowell.